Welcome to LACC TV. I'm Jose Bonilla. And I'm Carmen Cacophony, here with today's breaking top story. Breaking news. New wildfire forces a closure on the I-5 in Santa Clarita. Over 200 firefighters are now fighting another fast-moving wildfire this Tuesday. This one being located in Santa Clarita, which prompted a closure on the Interstate 5. The Rye Fire grew to 200 acres by 10.50 a.m. and had zero containment, said Los Angeles County Fire Inspector Joey Marone. Power outages have been also reported throughout the Santa Clarita Valley. Unfortunately, this fire could not come at a worse time since there are also two major fires occurring in Silmar and Ventura, where more than 150 structures were lost. Wildfires have been especially bad this year following last year's drought, which causes what would be small fires to turn unmanageable. Poor power line maintenance may also be a cause of some fires, as the State Public Utilities Commission was fined $8.3 million for not properly clearing vegetation around their conductors. Another contributing factor is the Santa Ana winds, which are particularly strong right now. Over 8,000 firefighters are currently trying to put the fires out. Stay safe out there. A pregnant woman underwent an emergency cesarean section after being critically earned, injured during a car accident early this past Sunday morning. The accident was along the 405 freeway in Van Nuys and left both, and left both a man and a pregnant woman severely injured. The collision involved their 2001 Toyota Corolla slamming against a tree. No other cars were involved. The occupants have, in the car have been identified as Lorenzo Lopez, 42, and Yolanda Aguilera, 31, who crashed around 2 a.m. When officers arrived, they state they saw major visible injuries. Aguilera was unresponsive and had strong injuries that could be seen on the left side of her head. Lopez was found unconscious as well as severely hurt with a broken leg. In an emergency, call 911, or in LA, text 911. Calling by phone is still the quickest way to reach emergency services, but a if a person is deaf or cannot speak in certain situations, texting is now an option for people in the cities of Burbank, Glendale, Long Beach, and Los Angeles. While emergency responders prefer and call in order to describe and assess situations more quickly and accurately, it may be the only option for some people. The new service is currently only available in English and does not recognize emojis. Ontario gang detectives arrested a man and two teens in connection with a double stabbing that resulted in the death of a 16-year-old boy. This Friday, authorities responded to the 800 block off East Nocta Street around 6.40 p.m. where people fled the scene of a large fight where two victims had been stabbed. One of the victims, a 16-year-old, died after being taken to the local hospital, according to a Ontario Police Department news release. The other victim was taken to a hospital as well, but his injuries were not life-threatening. Fernando Martinez, 22, was booked at the West Valley Detention Juvenile Center, while two 16-year-old residents were booked at the San Bernardino County Juvenile Hall, each being held at a $1 million bail. Have you ever had a craving for a juicy hamburger and then remembered, wait, I'm a vegetarian? Oh. Reporter Benjamin Katz went on an impossible mission in Los Angeles. Let's see what exactly he found out. California to try out something that claims to do the impossible. It's called the Impossible Burger. What makes it so unique? Well, it's not made out of meat and it's no ordinary veggie burger. So let's check it out. The Impossible Burger is made with a vegan patty designed by Silicon Valley-based company Impossible Foods with the aim to not just create a delicious meat substitute for vegetarians, but for everyone. Before ordering, we were also given literature about the burger, along with a slightly awkward promotion for the Impossible Trio, featuring Will Smith's son Jaden. I went with the classic Impossible Burger, and at first glance, it looks just like a regular cheeseburger. The plant-based patty was almost indistinguishable from ground beef. How about the taste, though? Well, I'm pleased to say it was really good. Very close to a regular burger. But I do have to say the texture was a little bit off from ground beef. While here, I met a woman named Felicia who was also just trying the Impossible Burger for the first time. She went with the Jaden Smith Trio. It's surprising how it tastes like beef in a way, but 
It's like the things you think about beef, it's replicating that pretty well. I think it's tasty. It's not up to par with like the umami beef when you have the beef burgers here, but it's the fact that they're able to make the things you think about beef like in something that has no meat in it at all is really cool. So yeah, I would, I would totally eat this. It was definitely good enough for me to finish my plate. Although Felicia and I are now fans, the same can't be said for my cameraman, Dennis. Um, I wasn't a big fan. It, the texture was really off to me, and it, the overall taste just wasn't all that appealing. Now, if you'd like to try the Impossible Burger, you can grab one here at Umami Burger or any other participating location you can find on impossiblefoods.com. Great story. I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> we should go eat after this. <laughs> Stick around after the break. Ben will return to the set for a backstage chat with comedian Jessica Pike. And Svetlana will join us live in the studio with an entertainment update. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It has been announced that the Russia will not be allowed to compete in the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang. This decision was made final by the International Olympic Committee in response to the investigation that the Russian government sponsored doping among their athletes in the 2014 Olympic Games in Sochi. A select group of Russian athletes will still be allowed to compete in the 2018 Games. However, they will undergo rigorous drug testing only to be allowed to compete as individuals wearing neutral uniforms and not representing Russia. This move from the IOC will likely be appealed by Russia's Olympic Committee. However, at this time, Russian government has yet to respond. Director, writer, producer, painter, musician, sound designer, is there anything David Lynch can't do? Well, he can add another title to his list of talents, Jewelry Designer. That's right, the collection entitled Meditating Eye was launched to commemorate the 10th anniversary of the David Lynch Foundation, which promotes consciousness-based education through world peace and transcendental meditation, or TM, the technique which is known from helping everything from PTSD to anxiety. Lynch is a avid TM practitioner and is donating 20% of the jewelry profits to the foundation. For a bit of good news, if you're flying American Airlines over the holidays, you can rest easy that there will be no issues or delays in your flight. The carrier and its pilot union said that they will have enough pilots to cover all of their December flights. Earlier this week, the Allied Pilots Association said a computer glitch allowed too many pilots to make time off this month, which left thousands of flights without a captain. The company stated that working together with the Allied Pilots Association, they were able to put the worry to rest and made sure that their flights will operate as scheduled. Both parties met this Friday morning to discuss a fix. American Airlines President Robert Isom was in attendance, according to an APA spokesman, to deal with the shortage. American Airlines said that, they will, that pilots that pick up certain open trips will receive 150% of their hourly pay. One of the world's top vacation destinations is currently experiencing two and a half miles of volcanic ash spitting from its center. Bali, the Indonesian island famous for world-class resorts and beaches, is in a state of unrest as over 130,000 people have had to move from the mountain base where lava threatens to erupt. The international airport was temporarily temporarily closed, stranding over 120,000 passengers and tourists. And some flights aren't rescheduled until after Christmas. It is uncertain at this point if the volcanic activity will get worse before it gets better. 
Canada could make billions from legalizing pot by 2021 as it faces one last hurdle to becoming the first G7 nation to legalize recreational marijuana. Canada's Cannabis Act was introduced to the Senate this Tuesday, which would be the last legislative stop before approval. This bill is fortunately widely supported by the public and by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Senator Tony Dean of Ontario states that he thinks it's broadly recognized that criminalizing cannabis has been a failure and that he believes that it will pass by July 2018, if not sooner. Retailers have been preparing themselves to start selling legal marijuana in July, so timing could be perfect according to recent estimates from Marijuana Business Daily. Annual sales for Canada's recreational cannabis market could range between $2.3 and $4.5 billion by 2021. Hopefully the U.S. will soon follow its fellow G7 nation for the same publication states that by 2021, sales for recreational use of cannabis will range between $7.1 to $10.3 billion per year. I love Canada. <laughs> I'm sure you do. The holidays are right around the corner, which means lots of fun events are happening around the LA, arts, entertainment, and lots of great comedy. Svetlana Yurash is here to bring us some holiday cheer with a few tips for the arts and entertainment lovers to keep in mind. Thanks for joining us, Svetlana. Thank you. Hamilton, which has enjoyed a four-month run at the Pantage Theatre, will be leaving for San Diego at the end of this month. In an effort to make the show more affordable, the producers have run a lottery of $10 tickets, known as Ham for Ham, for select seats at every performance. Now through December 17th, over 2,000 seats at the Pantage Theatre will be available in the lottery for the 8 p.m. December 19th performance. Winners are limited to two seats and will be sent a link from Ticketmaster. Don't throw away your shot at winning a ticket to the hottest musical in the country. Sign up for the lottery on the Hamilton website, hamiltonmusical.com, and also at the Pontage Theatre website, hollywoodpontages.com. Los Angeles is full of events. One hot event is the 2017 LA Auto Show, where visitors can see a lot of beautiful and exotic cars from famous brands such as Mercedes, Bentley, Porsche, Ferrari, and many more. The Auto Show runs from December 1st to 10th at Los Angeles Convention Center. A lot is going on at the Getty Center. Different exhibits will please art lovers of all kinds. One of the exhibits is Golden Kingdom's Luxury and Legacy in the Ancient Americas. Visitors will see more than 300 masterpieces of luxury art. It runs until the end of January. The next beautiful event is called Enchanted Forest of Light in Descanso Gardens. Visitors will enjoy a one mile long, unique and beautiful lighting experience. This amazing interactive walk at night is not to be missed. Tickets are $28. Kids under two are free. The forest will stay enchanted till January 7. In the age of Instagram, people come up with a lot of interesting ideas for pictures. That's why in the art district of DTLA, Happy Place opened from November 20th to January 7. The colorful room is full of bright installation. A raised flower bed, a birdie room, and a confetti dome, and other fun pop-up things await bloggers. Tickets are $28.50. Many events are happening for everybody to get out, enjoy, and have fun. Benjamin Katz joins us for a backstage chat, coming up next with Jessica Pike. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Backstage Chat. It's the show where we not only go backstage, but we also chat. I'm here with actress and comedian Jessica Pike. She's uh, very talented. You might know her from a lot of things. So let's uh, let's give her a big hand. Come on. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for being here, Jessica. So uh, first, I'd like to ask you about your uh, background in sketch comedy. Now, um, I know you've taken a lot of classes. Uh, you. You've done a lot of really good work. Uh, where did you take classes, actually? Let's, let's start there. I took classes at Groundling, Second City, and I.O. West. Very cool. Um, yeah, and then uh, what kind of shows do you do? Do you Have you ever done shows at, at Second City or any of these uh, places? Yeah, I had a show called My Crazy Ex-Boyfriends, where okay. girls impersonated their crazy ex-boyfriend and wrote stand-up comedy about themselves. Mm -hmm. It's a little complicated, but the concept was there. Then I did... 
Uh, Disney roast at Second City. Oh wow! Okay, what's what's? Let, tell me about the Disney roast. What's what's that about? It was Disney princesses and princes doing a roast. Mm -hmm. um, we did Mickey Mouse at the time, and it was princesses talking about how Mickey sexually harassed them. Oh wow! We were okay. ahead of the curve. This was like over a year ago. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So uh, basically, just you know. Making fun of Disney a little bit. Uh, Definitely. You didn't have, no lawyers came down on you, right? No one did. And we okay. actually used Disney and we had the princesses and the princesses were all really dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. um, Cinderella was a meth head who smoked meth out of her glass slipper. <laughs> that's, that's new. <laughs> Sleeping Beauty had a, a benzo problem. Okay. She was popping pills. They're very sleep. modern issues for, uh, for a Disney princess. Exactly. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh uh, yeah, what, what are some of the other places uh, people might know you from? People might know me from Periscope. Oh, okay. Uh, what exactly is Periscope? It was the first live streaming app. Gotcha, okay. So what, what kind of stuff did you do on Periscope? I did a lot of characters. Um, I would go out in public sometimes and I would just take suggestions from people commenting. Gotcha, so you'd, just be, you'd be holding your phone and, and doing a live stream and going around kind of pranking people, that, that kind of thing? Or? Yeah, I was mm -hmm. one of those um, jerks that you see now running around with their phone in their face in public. Uh -huh. It'd be in a character, which kind of made the phone in your f more appropriate, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And people would write comments saying like, go to Whole Foods and ask them where the kosher pork chops are. Uh -huh, that's a good one. Just walk in, I'd be like, hey, where's the kosher pork chops? <laughs> And they'd be like, what? What? <laughs> That's really good. Okay, so, you, oh, so, so you do some characters too, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, yeah, what kind of, so other than uh, Periscope, I mean, what, are the, what are some of the characters that you've been workshopping? Well, I have a character called Bambi, mm -hmm. and she's an archetype of girls who move to LA and they want to be Instagram models slash reality TV stars. Mm -hmm. She's a combination of a type of the type of monster that reality TV has created over the past decade. Gotcha, gotcha. So she's basically the uh, kind of uh, typical, um, well, what would you say, kind of a, a crazy lady here in, in LA, uh, young, young actress, wannabe? She's like your typical Hollywood hoe, mm -hmm. which if I could do it, I would. I would. You would be. Uh, I'm jealous of some of these girls. Oh, so okay. I created a character that mocks them because the root of me being a hater is because I wish I could go have a million sugar daddies and try to be on reality TV mm -hmm. and be an Instagram model and all this fun stuff. Uh -huh. Take pictures of Chanel bags, put it online, but no one really knows where your true source of income is coming or you're in Barbados one week with your sugar daddy and the next weekend you're in Hawaii and then you're like at Leo's table like oh my god my life is amazing Instagram what's up bitch <laughs> that's yeah bitch. I've, I've, <laughs> I've seen those people <laughs> so you're jealous of just um just how open they are and how they you know they they don't care about what anyone thinks about them yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's interesting so uh yeah so thank you so much for uh, for being here Jessica um, and where can we find you on the internet? Is this, uh, you're on Twitter and Instagram and where, where else? I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, and I'm on YouTube at Pikey Time TV mm -hmm. with a whole 20 subscribers right now. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, wow. And uh, Twitter, it's at Pikey Time, is that right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for being here, uh, Jessica. Um, yeah, and uh, we'll close out with a quick clip from her show, uh, Coke Whores. Have a good night, everyone. In the city of angels, not everyone is an angel, but we found a true angel this Thanksgiving. John Thomas joins us with his heartwarming story. Two days after Thanksgiving, a homeless man in New Haven, Connecticut, returned a $10,000 check to a businesswoman who rewarded him with cash, a home, and a job. After Elmer Alvarez returned the lost $10,000 check to Dr. Roberta Hosky, she said he has absolutely no idea what's about to happen. She first presented Alvarez with a certificate of appreciation for honesty, set him up with an interview with one of her partners, and gave him cash reward. 
She also gave him a full scholarship to the Outreach School of Real Estate, of which she is the president and CEO. She ultimately shocked Alvarez, who broke down in tears when she said, you don't have to be in the code. We have housing for you. His rent and bills have been paid in full for the next six months. Dr. Hosky drowning in the tears of her own because she was once homeless herself. In this moment of joyful tears, Alvarez simply said, thank God. You don't have to worry about being in the cold. We have housing for you. Pay it for it. That's it. When you get on your feet, you go ahead and you do it for the next person and the next person and the next person. Wow. That was really a nice gesture. I don't know if I would have done the same. Stick around for more news after the break. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Today we have a lovely special guest. She is one of Hollywood's brightest up and coming stars as a writer director. She has done many films and is at the top of her class in the field of cinema. Welcome, Duana Spates. Hey, hey. Right. all right, great. How, how, you, how, how you doing and how's the family? And hey, I'm good, John. Thank you so much great, for having great. me on. You're good, great. cold, <laughs> yeah. they're in Cleveland. <laughs> So I've, uh, I hear that you're working on some new projects and uh, would you like to care to take some time to elaborate on, give us some insight on them? Yeah, so um, I'm part of a writer's team right mm -hmm. now and we're working on a half hour comedy okay. and then I'm currently in post on a short film that I did um, a couple couple months ago. So. Oh, great, great. Now, yeah. I, I know there's always competition, so is it hard handling the competition, uh, the success amongst your peers? Well, I feel like we all have something that we're good at, so competition isn't a word that I, I kind of don't really use it because mm -hmm. I feel like when you're good at something, there's not really competition. You know, we're all just kind of, because there's enough room for everybody, you know? Right, right. So, if you're good at something and she's good at something and he's good at something, we're all gonna come together eventually. You yeah, know? I get, I really feel that. Now, I know you're uh, most most likely to be juggling different aspects in your life. And uh, so <laughs> tell us a little bit of what your life is like outside the cinema industry. Oh gosh, okay, my life is like jumbled right now okay. because <laughs> I'm juggling work mm -hmm. on the weekends, which is, nuts and then I'm juggling you know school and mm -hmm. then cinema stuff so right now I'm trying to transfer so I'm dealing with all these like core education classes like general eds mm -hmm. that I have to take which have nothing to do with oh, wow. cinema so it's just <laughs> astronomy is no joke <laughs> <laughs> so then uh now what kind of advice would you give to some of the new students that's wanting to embark in this cinema field I would give the advice of finding what you love to do in the field. Mm -hmm. So like, because there's so many different facets of this industry, there's so many ways that one can get in. Okay. For, like not always having to be a director or a writer, an actor, you know? Okay, yeah, um, that's true. Find what you like to do, what you're passionate about mm -hmm. in this industry, and then get good at that. Wow, You know, yeah, that's a beautiful advice, yeah. Aww. <laughs> yeah. Now, I noticed that I caught you on a wide division segment now. <laughs> Tell me, uh, how did you feel about that survey? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. I, you okay. know, it's a it's a good thing to question people, uh -huh. you know, and Kinda caught you off guard. Get them off, yes, get them <laughs> off guard. You know, I just hope I didn't say anything incriminating. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Nah>, you're great. <laughs> now, listen, now, you always been an inspiration to your peers oh, and a role model in the community now just as oh, well. So now, we, what we want to know is, what, how do you feel is the keys to your success? What are, what are they? I feel like 
one finding what you're good at mm -hmm. and being good at that like just getting as educated as okay. possible in that finding what grind like grounds you you know mm -hmm. like what gets you grounded and keeps you from like falling to pieces when oh, okay. things aren't going your way or mm -hmm. Also keeping you kind of humble so that you're not like, I'm the best that I can be, you know, no. Yeah. Like, and then the relationships that you build with people. I think those, that's very important, you know? Oh, wow, that, that is very truthful, yeah. Yeah, now I've never seen you down or upset <laughs> or nothing like that, you know? What, what makes you such a joy to be around, you know? Give and, us a, some clues on that one. I try to be happy, <laughs> I mean, not, not happy, but like laugh at, like things you uh -huh. know and not like like I don't let things dictate my feelings okay. so you know like I'm not gonna oh just because this doesn't work out I'm not gonna be mad you know what I'm saying yeah. like I try to be joyful okay no got you what. got you that is beautiful so now <laughs> there there you have it ladies and gentlemen brought to you live and direct uh -huh. right here on LACC Dewana, right here love it guys You've messed up your son's haircut. Ma? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got? Or C, show solidarity? Thank you, babe. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Tony McNair joins us in the studio to share her opinion on the state of events in the world today. Welcome, Tony. Thank you. How many of you are familiar with Los Angeles being called the sanctuary city after the last presidential election? It was very important for some elected officials across the country to quickly reaffirm their cities as sanctuaries for people in this country illegally as prepared for the president's to promise crackdown on the city's beliefs. Mayor Eric Garcetti and city officials feel that the term sanctuary city doesn't accurately describe the city's policies, that the terms have no fixed definition. Look out Uber customers. Well, anybody that uses Uber often, you probably have plenty of stories to tell. Uber is under fire again once a, for its 2016. Uber went through two million amid finding out that the rider fares only cover about 40% and the rest were subsidized by venture capitalists. Disaster after disaster, it is a, it is a wonder that Uber's confrontational attitude has put, hasn't put them out of business. It is simple. So many ordinary people and companies alike use Uber for so many reasons. So in that instance, it has become a part of our culture. I don't see Uber going anywhere anytime soon, no pun intended. Just then, the president continues his crusade to undermine every review that his predecessor, President Barack Obama, created long before he left the office. In, in Utah, President Trump announces his proclamation dramatically shrinking the size of the state's two mass massive monuments, Bears Ears and the Grand Staircase Escalante. Collectively, this order marks the largest reversal of a national monument protection in U.S. history. I'm Tony, and this has been my time. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook at LACC TV. And watch our programs on YouTube at LACC TV channel. Have a safe and happy holiday season.